On the podcast today, we are going to dissect chapter 51 of the Tao Te Ching, which makes up the 51st episode of the 81 Meditations on the Tao Te Ching. And as usual, Guyang will read Jia Fu Feng and Jane English's translation, and I will read Derek Lin's translation. All things arise from Tao. They are nourished by virtue. They are formed from matter. They are shaped by environment. Thus, the 10,000 things respect Tao and honor virtue. Respect of Tao and honor of virtue are not demanded, but they are in the nature of things. Therefore, all things arise from Tao. By virtue, they are nourished, developed, cared for, sheltered, comforted, grown, and protected. Creating without claiming, doing without taking credit, guiding without interfering. This is primal virtue. Tao produces them. Virtue raises them. Things shape them, forces perfect them. Therefore the myriad things all respect the Tao and value virtue. The respect for Tao, the value of virtue, not due to command, but to constant nature. Thus Tao produces them, virtue raises them, grows them, educates them, perfects them, matures them, nurtures them, protects them, produces but does not possess, acts but does not flaunt, nurtures but does not dominate. This is called mystic virtue. So this chapter is about how Tao produces the 10,000 things, the myriad world around us, and how they grow by virtue of the life force within us. Mm. And that's how the world comes into existence. And so that's what this chapter is really about. Yeah, it's almost like the role of Tao and the virtue. I mean, you don't dissect it like that because they both are the same thing, come from the same source and identical. But Tao kind of brings the whole beings into the world, bring the life to the world. And the Tao, the virtue, nourishes them so that the virtue gives uh, the, the energy and the life force within these beings, I think. Yep. So... Slightly the different, but at the the same at the same time. So if you, you could say Tao is in Brahman, it's the ultimate creator, ultimate reality that gives the life to everything, ten thousand things, and the virtue as in Atman. The both are identical, but the Atman is also Brahman. But Atman cannot exist without Brahman. So. Yeah, so it goes uh, together with the concept of Tao and the virtue in this chapter. That's right. And so we all possess that, as you said, with the Atman, which is identical with Brahman. So the Tao is moving through us, that life force, the Qi, even the you know the Shen, the, the Jing, the Qi, the Shen. So the Jing being sort of the genetic battery we got from our parents, the chi, the life force, and also the shen, the spirit, it's all coming from Tao. And we've all been endowed with that. We've all been given that in equal proportion. And so the difference is, is that we are all brought into different life circumstances, different environments, and this and that. But this is where you need to understand Taoism because the Tao loves and nourishes all but does not lord it over them. So just as nature spontaneously happens, we spontaneously happen into the environments that we find ourselves in, the situations that we find ourselves in. And I know that we live in a day and age where everyone is complaining about their position in life or that they don't have certain privileges that other people do and this and that. But that, again, is a lack of understanding of the Tao. Because if you understood the Tao, you'd understand that this is just the way nature presents itself. Mm. And often in uh, lesser developed countries people don't complain it's usually in the more developed countries where people are complaining and whining and whinging about their position in life because they've just got too much time on their hands to complain about things <laughs> whereas in the third world people get on with life and they understand this principle more they understand their connection to the Tao more they understand that they are endowed with this atman this virtue mm. that brings the power of the Tao into the world mm. and so this is why the Taoist understanding of the world is completely different to monarchical perspectives of the universe. So again, Taoism is a philosophy where the Tao loves and nourishes all but does not lord it over them, which is different to a monarchical perspective 
of a God lording it over us. Yes. Um, when we talk about virtue, okay, Tao, Tao is always there, always been there and always will be there after long gone all of the human beings and planetary system. That itself is Tao anyway. Yep. But virtue is something that in, in Confucian philosophy, it, virtue is something that you need to kind of cultivate. cultivate. But again, the cultivate aspect coming into place when we don't trust in our own human nature, right? But I think that human nature has been not recognized its uh, in intelligence because of the socialization and the conditioning and the education that we go through. So that f education is what it, you are cultivating um, knowledge, you are collecting information to to know more things and so that we go out there and function as a human being in the society, right? And so I think in Confucian philosophy, they took a virtue in a similar sense as we learn at school. You need to cultivate, you need to learn the, the, how to be a virtuous human being, right? But in some sense, that kind of discipline is uh, needed in this day and age in actually to unlearn in a sense to go back and discover what was already within us right and we will be able to find a real sense of virtue which we already was born with uh, mm. to begin with because yeah, the con concept of virtue in human realm human level that we think that we need to cultivate but we need to, not cultivating virtue, but we need to cultivate, in a sense, the ability to see ourselves in the purest form. Mm. Well, as we spoke about in previous chapters about the great unlearning, when you go through the great unlearning of your own individuality, your own personality, your own identity, then the virtue comes through more. The virtue is kind of blocked because of all of the learning, like you said, the cultivating. So this is why Lao Tzu and Confucius were in disagreement because Confucius kept adding things to people, kept giving them more knowledge about how to induce the Tao in their own life and in society, where Lao Tzu was saying, but the Tao is innate within us. You have to actually go through, from the Confucian perspective, a great unlearning if we look at Confucianism, right? Because Confucianism, you're adding too many things. So Lao Tzu is saying you need to go through a great unlearning. And if you saw the world today with the amount of education that people have and the amount of information that people embody and consume, then he would fall off his chair because it's just it's way too much information. It just boggles the mind. And it just causes a lot of distraction in our mind it, and it destabilizes our mind. So we lose equanimity, we lose a deep feeling and understanding of the Tao in our own life. And that's why a lot of materialists and atheists, so to speak, don't have a sensation of the Tao in their life because they're so busy doing certain things. And look, even, uh, for example, spiritual and religious people can have this phenomenon as well, where you lose access of or a cognition of the Tao in your life. Whereas when you go through a great unlearning process, the virtue becomes more prevalent. Mm. And so then that force begins to emanate through you. And that's what De is, right? De, in that sense, can be used in relation to also charisma. So like you're giving off this bright, positive light for other people to learn and grow from. Because you're, you are growing by taking less away from yourself which is actually what we all should be doing. And Lao Tzu is saying in that sense that we need to focus on what's important to learn as opposed to what's unnecessary to learn. And there's a lot of unnecessary mm. learning in the world today, a lot of unnecessary information. People are so attracted to politics, so attracted to conflict, so attracted to just drama in general that they lose their innocence and they lose their equanimity because they are being trained according to how the social media companies and 
how media companies and and the, how maybe their friends and family are being trained to be. Yes. And so this is a massive problem where you lose contact with the Tao. You forget that you are one with it and you forget that it emanates through all of us. But the reason why it emanates through some of us more than others is because others are going through the great unlearning while others are completely ignorant of that great unlearning. Mm. Yeah, something like charisma is, uh, of course, everyone wants to have, right? Like, But it's not something that you can pretend to be charismatic, no. although we see a lot of people do. Mm. But charisma is something that it comes from inside out, which naturally flows out of your being from you having to cultivate in your own real sense of the self. Yeah. So only that way you can really have charisma, the, 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 the yeah. virtue, exactly. right? The people often pretend to be charismatic so they dress up a certain way, they uh, have a develop certain type of mannerisms and but soon we know that that individual is not truly a charismatic person because charisma is uh, actually come from having your own you you trust your own nature and that nature's intellect become yours and that just comes out of you effortlessly mm. and that's when some that has that magnetic pull to other people right so yeah. that's why we get attracted to certain people because of their intuition and intelligence and wisdom and all these kind of things and those things can only come about when you truly let go of what you think you want to become yeah Lao Tzu would say, as to speak to what you were saying, he would say that we are all naturally charismatic, but we are at odds with our own humanity. So we're brought up in environments where we may be trained by society or a culture or a certain religion that we are sinful or that we are beasts from birth. But Taoism flips that on its head, saying we are innately good, which we are, we are fundamentally good, and we, we learn bad habits and we learn to be a reflection of a toxic world. And so Lao Tzu would say we're all innately charismatic, but we don't lean into our true nature. So everyone has their own different psychosomatic organism, their own different flower. So we're all like a different flower, right, in nature. And we have our own different aroma and our own different gift to give the world. But we grow up in a certain society or culture that says that, no, you're, you're sinful. You know, you're a sinful person. And so you need to work on yourself in that sense. So you, you, you're raised with all of this type of indoctrination, mm. which then makes you become a warped version of yourself. And so usually the most charismatic people in the world haven't gone through that type of training. They're just free to be themselves. And we can use comedians as a good example of this, right? A lot of comedians are just openly free to be themselves mm -hmm. and speak their mind and could care less what other people think. And Lao Tzu and Zhuangzi are, are always the first people in the crowd at these comedy events for sure if they are alive because they love it. They, this is, they are witnessing what humans should be. Mm -hmm. But if they saw people curating themselves and watching what they say and, and warping their nature to suit a certain narrative in the world and so forth and so on. This is a complete disaster. How could you be charismatic in that way? Because you're overly analytical of your own self mm. and you're not just being as you are, the world is, right? So as I mentioned with Jing, Qi and Shen, right? The Jing that you've been given by your parents has that innate history within it that can bring that through your chi and your shen and you know then you can give that off in the world mm. you can be charismatic then you can be witty you can have all of these things but you can't be at odds with your own humanity and do it because yes. being at odds with your own humanity is a reason why you're not charismatic yourself you know mm. and so that's part of the aspect of this chapter is you know the environment we're raised in right so the environment shapes us yeah and to you know to speak to charisma that's why our nature is warped and in the mentors they actually say that 
there's a story about Ox Mountain and, and Manchester is with his student and the student, because Manchester is saying to him that all of our natures are fundamentally good and the student's like, come on, seriously, have a look around all of these mountains in, in the environment that they were. So there always there was all of these green mountains, right? And then there was Ox Mountain, which was barren and had no vegetation and this and that. And Manchester said, you're looking at this incorrectly. He's like, look where the location of the mountain is. So it's right beside a city. And so people are taking up their goats and this and that that are grazing the land all the time. And so it's not the innate nature of the mountain that is bad, in air yeah. quotes. It's the environment that is brought up in that makes it toxic. Mm. And so we are shaped by the environment and other living things. Yes. And so... The Tao puts us in certain places and we develop these interdependent connections with the world that shape us a certain way, but we're all brought up in different situations. Mm. We're not all brought up in the same situation because nature doesn't operate like that. And even the social and cultural world is not like that. There are different flavors in the world. And I think that people get caught up in that, where they think that there should be just this one universal way of how we're raised in life and this and that. So in fighting for diversity, they actually kill diversity in that sense. Yes, yes. Instead of just allowing the world to be as it will, Mm. and then everyone will follow their own natures in accord with how the Tao is moving through them. Yeah, that's right. The environmental fact is as important as any other elements here is talking about like yes in, in this chapter mainly it talks about like four different conditions to complete a being or an object which is Tao, virtue, matter and environment like you said and environment what yeah, completing being in that sense so environment is a it's of course it's very important that the the how we create the environment, how what and what we are surrounded by, is also influencing us in a certain way to think and behave. And if we are overly overwhelmed by it, often we um, become the environment, right? And we also, in that sense, uh, need to have a strong, somewhat a detector to detect that it's happening exactly. around you, but. In this chapter, as Lao Tzu would say, that environment should not interfere with anything, right? Because that's not what Tao and virtue are doing. That it doesn't interfere with anything and letting things to be as they are. So that uh, we also have a certain responsibility for our own environment to allow us to be as we are, in a sense. Yeah. That's a good point because the environment and these interdependent situations, connections that you find yourselves in throughout your life still doesn't determine the life force within you. So that's going to come through regardless of if you're in Namibia or Nepal. It doesn't matter which environment you're in. The life force is going to emanate through you and present itself according to how it shall be. Look, you can be overly shaped by the environment right and we see that in the modern day where a lot of people are so influenced by the environments that they find themselves in and then they neglect the life force within them because the life force is saying something else the environment is telling you something but then you're thinking wait up i don't think like that and so then we grow up in this new world this day and age where you can't speak your mind mm. the Tao is telling you that the Tao is saying, this is what's got to get out of you. Yeah. This is the creative outlet that I'm giving you, but the environment is dictating the terms, unfortunately. Yeah. And so if you're on the spiritual path, you need obviously you have to be careful with that. I mean, you can't just go around <laughs> shouting things to the, to the sky. You have to be intuitively in tune with the Tao. And that's one of the aspects of this chapter is that we're creating a world where we're intuitively out of sync with the Tao because we've gone lock stock into a certain way of life that eclipses the Tao, warps our nature, and then we can't understand that mystic virtue that's trying to get through us. Mm. We need to be very in tune with where we are in an environmental setup and we need to be very awake and alert in a sense 
what that environment is doing to us, whether that's benefiting us or not. Mm, that's right. So in relation to what we were saying about the environment, being confused by the environment or whatnot, the Tao is creating that situation for all of us to grow, nevertheless, right? The Tao doesn't just create the myriad things in the world. It creates the life for us to live where we have to overcome challenges, helps us grow, helps us develop. And this is one of the key elements of Taoism, right? And the key elements of how the Tao moves through us. So it's not just the environments that we're from, the situations we're in. It's that all of those are there for us to develop. It's not something for us to be confused about, not something for us to join the circus. It's about us. It's all for us to develop and, and grow as an individual. Yeah, sometimes we see that the environment is a perfect reflection of ourselves, right? As in um, what, what we are going through or how we should uh, make make a right decision and take a right action and also like your internal state of mind as well sometimes. So the uh, environment sometimes is mirroring back to us to show us something. Yeah. So that shows up, as you mentioned, like uh, challenges and obstacles and whatnot. Right. So all these things can be very helpful in a sense to find ourselves in in a sense where we are really going through. Yeah. A lot of people talk about like the lessons of life and this and that, but a lot of people struggle with their own life. So it's a matter of do you truly know this or not? Do you know that everything you're going through is, is a lesson for your own growth or is it just lip service? Hmm. You know, a lot of people say, you know, there's only learnings, right? There's a new phrase like, you know, there's no failures, it's only learning. And so these type of ideas... But it's like, do you truly understand that? Do you truly understand that the Tao is moving you along down the river so that you overcome these obstacles, these challenges, so that you become a better person? So, and But ironically, in doing so, it's always pushing us to a point where it wants us to let go of certain aspects of ourselves. Mm -hmm. So obviously, we are fundamentally one with the Tao when we m remove our personality, our identity. And often times in our life, the Tao is moving us down that river so that we keep peeling those layers away. But a lot of us keep trying to sticky tape the <laughs> layers on yes. because we don't want to accept the reality around us right. and the reality of our own life. So we're trying to hold on to that reality of our own life. But you have to just keep peeling these layers away. And then you become one with the river. Yeah, that's right. We also want to stick to our identity as well, as in the false identity, false personality, false persona, so that, yeah, we want to keep it close to us, but, yes, we have to let it go, although it's a difficult process, but in that process we will gain something much bigger and greater. Yeah, and in that process, like this is a thing that I mentioned earlier, the Tao doesn't have an idea of right or wrong, good or bad. It's presenting you with the life circumstances for you to grow and develop and to become one with the Tao. So it's not like a Western religion, for example, where there's a concept of good and evil and so forth and so on, right? So the Tao doesn't possess us. Mm. It's just giving us the situations in life for us to overcome ourselves. Yes. And it's only those who are intuitively acute to the, what's going on around them that can hear the message. Mm. and can then start to develop and engage in that spiritual work to peel those layers away instead of fighting the world that they find themselves in. Mm. Maybe it's a lot of people find the concept of Tao is a bit more confusing or even complicated because I think it, I mean, a lot of us are unconsciously uh, trained by the Christian way of thinking as in this creator God is uh, outside of us and he or she created the world for us and we live in that world kind of concept. So that creator is somewhere outside, it's not part of the world that we live in, whereas Tao is completely the opposite. Tao is the very creative source of the entire universe, but at the same time, it is, it is within us. It, it is part of us and it is uh, within the world mm. so that uh, it is... Uh, 
flowing through us so we are also the creative source of the universe at the same time yep. but again as we know the humility is a big part of Taoism as in how Tao doesn't possess us doesn't possess the world as in materialistic way of thinking it just allows us to be where we are but it, it will uh, make the the most beautiful uh, look when it becomes just the way it's supposed to be. That's so right. that is only uh, that only can happen when we allow it to happen, right? So again, as we mentioned earlier, when we can let go of our own uh, sense of personality, identity, and also the ego that we like to put the outside world as in the world should be this way or that way kind of, Thinking, So we need to let go of that so that we can truly see what the Tao truly intend the world to be. That's right. And it's interesting when people say they don't understand Tao or Taoism, right? Because Tao is natural. Right? Like, so, for example, you don't have to think about going to the bathroom. You don't have to think about your urge to run away from a tiger. You didn't learn this, right? You didn't learn to move your bowels. You didn't learn to have an understanding that that tiger is, is going to feast on you if you don't get up that tree. Did you have to learn that? That's Tao. Yes. That's natural. And, and that's why I, I find it confusing a lot of time when people can't understand that because people don't want to accept the way nature is. They don't want to accept that. They want to turn the world into this kind of idealistic moral landscape which actually doesn't really exist. Mm. It only exists in our minds. But what I just said, the natural world, that exists. We know that. Try not going to the bathroom again. See what happens. Seriously. Try not running away from a tiger. See what happens. And so these things are natural. We don't have to learn them. Mm. And so the, that's how you can understand that the Tao endows us with everything we need. But these ideas and these concepts and this and that that we develop... This is from the environments that we find ourselves in. Mm. And that's what infects our mind. And then we lose contact with that naturalness. And so that's why the Taoist remedy is always Uwei. It's always about just allowing the world to happen and not interfering with the lives of others and the world itself. And that brings you back into harmony with the Tao. And so that's then how you can understand your own nature mm. and you can understand the nature of others and the nature of the existence itself the nature of Tao. Mm. And then you can understand that the Tao doesn't possess us like other gods and other religions, right? The God is lording it over us, condemning us. We are punished in, for whatever reason for our sins, not by our sins. And so there's all of this crazy way of thinking with those type of religions. Mm. Whereas Taoism is saying it's just natural. The Tao loves and nourishes all but doesn't lord it over them but gives you personal responsibility. Again, like you mentioned earlier, how in Taoism there is a no right or wrong, right? Right or wrong is good or bad is just a concept that we create in our own mind, right? Yeah. So that right and wrong, good or bad idea that Christianity promotes can only make us a bit more mad, I think, in a sense. Yeah. It's because you are trying to fulfill and uphold that concept, but in reality, we will we see so many situations that we come to in conflict with with that. So, yeah. but whereas in Taoism, there is no such thing as right or wrong. It's just when river goes that way, it goes that way. It goes this way, it goes this way, and it has own all has its own journey and course to take. And it depends on you uh, allowing it to happen without any agenda or mm. not. Yeah, that's right. That's a good point. And that's what Zhuangzi would say. Zhuangzi would say, for example, this concept of good and evil only exists because we ascribe something good or evil. So because we give it that label, that's why it continues to happen. And I was watching something recently where two people were talking about good and evil in the world and i thought it quite interesting because from an eastern philosophical and spiritual context 
the higher way of understanding is there is no good or evil or right or wrong in the world. And when you start to have that understanding, that's how you can understand everything that's going on. Mm. You can't understand it from one perspective. If you've got one perspective that you're on the good side and someone's on the evil side, they are on the other side saying the opposite. So who wins? Who is right? And so that's why Eastern philosophy and spirituality trumps everything because it sees the world from a non-dual, clear perception of reality. And then you can act immediately and appropriately according to whatever is needed in that moment. And so it's a, our responsibility to come back to that way of seeing, that way of understanding. Yes. And so that's why the spiritual work is necessary for those who are on the path. Because if we continue to see the world as right or wrong, good or bad, or this and that, then we are only contributing to more of the chaos and madness that's already existing. And so, guys, we hope you enjoyed and we'll see you guys next time.